Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1145. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to see how to create a randomized set of data. Now, the thing about formulas to create random sets of data is, man, there's all sorts of different types of data. That means there's all sorts of different formulas for creating randomized sets of data. And here's our data. We want, this is a data set like in our last video. We want ISO date where we have year, month with a leading zero, day with a leading zero, then calls made, and then manager names randomly selected from this first and last name. Now, this date is actually going to give us some trouble here. And mostly it comes from the day. I could create random years between 2012 and 15, random months between 1 and 12. But this one, I don't know how to do that, really, because some months have 28, 29, 30, and 31. So I'm actually going to first create a formula to create random serial numbers, which are underlying dates. And then from that, we'll create our ISO number. Now, what are dates, right? If we want 1 slash 1 slash 2012 as our start date, and 12 slash 31 slash 2015 as our end date, well, highlight those. That's the date format. You can apply the general to wipe away the number formatting and see the serial number, or Control Shift grave accent or tilde. So those are really the two numbers we need to randomize between. So we can use the RAND between. It'll randomize between, so 40,909, that's our bottom comma. 42,369 will be our upper. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Aha, F9 reveals that that's randomizing, but we should add some number formatting. So actually, th this right here is great if you're randomly creating dates. But we need to go from this to the ISO number. Now I need to copy this down to the bottom of my data set, which is 2004. So instead of clicking and dragging and copying down, I'm going to Control C. And I'm going to do this first slowly to look at how it works. And then we'll do it fast and see how cool it is. I'm going to hit the F5 key. Now, F5 is go to. Now, notice I haven't used my mouse yet, but I'm just using it to point. It highlights the cell expecting you to type a cell reference. So I'm going to type A2004. Now, what does go to do? If I were to click OK with my mouse, it would jump there. Now, that button right there is highlight. Any dialog box that has a button highlighted means if we hit Enter, it enacts it. But wait a second. Enter would just jump, right? I really want to highlight. So now I hold Shift and Enter. Ready? Shift and Enter. Now I've highlighted the whole thing so I can Control V. Now I'm going to Control Z to undo that. Escape. Let's do the whole thing in high speed. Control C. F5, A2004, Shift, Enter, Control, V. That is pretty amazing. Now, if I hit F9, you can see it's randomly creating serial numbers. Now, I'm actually going to use this column to create my date, and then we'll copy, paste special values. All right, so first I need the year. So I got the year there. The year, of course, would give me the year, right? And if it's randomizing, right? F9, you can see it's randomizing. But I need to join. So I'll use the join symbol, ampersand, shift 7. And now I would like to get the month. The problem with month, of course, is if I come here, see now it doesn't have a lead 0 for 3, 2015. So F2 to put it back in edit mode. No problem. Just as we learned in last video, we can use the text function to take a value and add number formatting. Now, it does require that you know custom number formatting. How do you show a lead 0? In double quotes, the number formatting is 0, 0. That 0, 0 shows 11 is 11, but 1 is as 0, 1. And double quote, close parentheses, Control Enter. So that's working. F9, F9, F9. That's beautiful. F2 to put it in edit mode. And then we have to do the same thing, ampersand text. And now we use the day. Now look at that. I tried to use my arrow key to go and get the cell reference, and it's not working. If you look down here, you could see it says edit. We need it to say enter or point. So watch this. 
it says edit. If I hit the F2 key, that toggles. F2, I'm hitting F2, it toggles between edit and enter. Edit will move the cursor through the formula. Enter, or if we start using our arrows, it moves to point. That allows us to go get cell references. You can see it moves to point when you actually are hunting for a cell reference with your arrow keys. Close parentheses, comma, double quote, zero, zero, double quote, close parentheses, control, enter, double click, and send it down. So that is our formula for our ISO. Now you could have you know, combined these two together, but that would get pretty big. Now I actually want to copy these two, control C. And I'm actually, let's go like this. I'm going to copy all of these control C, just so I leave a trail, because I'm going to convert these to values over here. Control V, and then come over here. Now, control Shift down arrow, and watch this. I'm going to point to the edge somewhere over here on the edge of that highlight range, and that's the move cursor. Now I'm going to right click. I'm not left clicking. I'm right clicking with my move cursor. And I'm going to drag it. By the way, I could drag it anywhere, but I want to drag it right one column over. And then let go of your right click, and a secret menu pops up. And it says, Copy Here as Values. All right, so now I'm going to Control Shift Down Arrow, Delete. All right, so now I have those hard coded there. Calls main equals ran between can be used here. And I'll just say 1, comma, 30. That will give me pretty much a uniformly distributed random set of numbers between 1 and 30. Oh, look at that. It's got date number formatting, Control Shift tilde to apply general. Double click and send it down. But if you want something maybe a little bit uh, fancier, not just uniform, F2, like if you did a pivot table and grouped them, most of the numbers would be pretty close. F2, we could do something fancy here. I'm going to use choose function. And I want to choose between two different formulas. So I'm going to say ran between. 1, 2. Now, how does choose work? Choose is a lookup function where you actually put the things you're looking up right in the arguments, value 1, value 2. But I need an index number, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I had four items, I only am going to have value 1 and value 2, two formulas I'm randomly choosing before. So in index, I need 1 or 2. So that'll work, comma. That'll be the first one. But check this out, comma. I can use a norm inverse and give it a standard deviation and a mean, and it will create a, a, like a bell-shaped distribution of numbers instead of a uniform d distribution. So I'm going to say norm. And actually, they changed all of the statistic functions in 2010. I'm going to use norm.inverse. In earlier versions, it was norm inverse. The dots are a new convention for statistics functions, but I'm going to hit tab. Now the probability, now here I'm going to use rand. Rand creates a random number between 0 and 1 with, with 15 significant digits. Digits, close parentheses. Comma, my mean is going to be, and I'm going to be right in the uh, middle, 15, because I got 1 to 30 here. And the standard deviation, you've got to be careful here. If you start giving it a big standard deviation where it could go below 0, then uh, you're going to have some trouble because I don't want 0 here. So standard deviation, 99% uh, of the values line within three standard deviations. So I'm just going to pick something. Um, if I did 5, that's three standard deviations with the V15, right? So I'm going to do something smaller. I'm going to say like 2. That means m most of the values would be clustered around 15. Now, this will give me values like 15, 15.1, 15.2. So I actually want. Uh, to round it to the 0. Round. We're always going to round it to the 0. That doesn't mean 0. It means to the integer. That's in the round function. Close parentheses, close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. That just means it gives me a slightly different distribution than uh, uniform all the way around. You can see most of the numbers are going to be right around that 15 range. All right, now, and actually, the thing about this is you don't have to use something uh, like that right there. You could just use different RAND between. So I have 1, 1 to 30, 1, 10 to 20. And however many formulas you have, you put it into index number RAND between. If you had 4, you'd have 1 to 4. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now I'm actually going to copy that formula over here. And I actually want to leave a 
trail here. This is going to be copy. This is going to be calls made right there. This is going to be ISO date. So right over here. So we have our randomizing formulas off to the side. But now we can do the same thing here. Control Shift down arrow. Right click the edge, drag and drag back because we actually want to replace them. Copy here as values only. All right, so managers, check this out. We actually have a column of first and last name. Actually, I'm going to delete this right here. And if you have a large data set, I would definitely add a helper column and join these. I'm going to do a type of array formula over here so I don't have to create this extra helper formula. But this thing, if you were creating 100,000 rows of data, it would go pretty slow because it's going to be a big array operation. But check this out. The index function, the, this is a lookup function. And the array, those are the values we want to look up. And then in row number or relative position, right? we have 50 items here. I'm going to put RAM between 1 to 50. But check this out, that array. I actually am going to highlight the first names, Control Shift down arrow F4, and then join to it. That's Shift 7, double quote space, double quote, and another join symbol, Control Shift down arrow F4. This is an array operation. The definition of an array formula is you're doing some operation. Now, operations could be math, comparative, in this case it's join, but some operation on more than one item. And in fact, there's lots of items on both sides. And the array operation does not spit out a single item like an aggregate calculation would. But when I hit F9, it spits out lots of items. So sure enough, it joined. You can see the array syntax. It's got in double quotes each one of the two names joined together, Control Z. Now here's the magic of the index function. That array argument understands how to calculate array calculations without any special keystroke like Control Shift Enter. Index is only one of four functions. Index, sum product, lookup, and aggregate are the functions in Excel that can do array calculations without any special keystroke. Comma, and then for row number or relative position, ran between and 1, comma, 50 because there's 50 names. Close parentheses, close parentheses, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. All right, now I'm going to copy this one formula over here. Control V. So those are my randomizing formulas. I just wanted to keep them there to remember. Control Shift down arrow. Right click, drag anywhere you want, but be sure to drag it back in. Copy here as values only. All right, so that was a little bit about randomly creating data. We had uh, one formula for serial numbers, and we had to figure out what the serial numbers were. We had a formula to create an ISO date, one for manager, which had an array operation in the array argument of index, and then ran between, oh, but wait a second, we wanted to choose between two different distributions of random numbers. Hey, uh, we want to take one more look before we end this video, because as I was uh, scrolling over here, Check that out. And look at that when you hover your cursor. There's, I don't know what version this came in. It says dates and times are negative or too large. I, I, that's a new screen tip. Uh, that's helpful because most of us think we just uh, move the column width to change the fence there. But what's happening is that's the text. When I hit Enter, it's going back to a value. So I'm going to very carefully Control Shift Down Arrow. And I'm going to tell this whole column, please show up as text. And there we go. So now that will work. All right, we'll see you next video.